hello welcome to literary life and welcome to my april unboxing of my book of the month club subscriptions as always i will have a link below to book of the month club if you are interested in signing up you do get your first book for five dollars using that link um, i will also just have links to the books in case you are interested in purchasing them once you hear about them the way book of the month club works for those of you not yet familiar they released now anywhere from five to seven books a month for their main selections and then on top of that they'll release an additional two to four i've seen add-ons a given month so you have a lot of choices especially now with the they just did that increase and on top of that though you need to know you can only select up to three books in one account shipment so from your account you can ship one box a month i do have two accounts you just use two separate email addresses and you can create a second account i know some people even have thirds i've almost gone there um this month i managed to keep it in one account you know it's so funny because i always have a list of just a few i really target a few books that are on my radar for a given month and for april i think i had four not one of them were a book of the month club selection and that is really unusual. So I was really surprised by that. But then there were three books I, I managed. I, I was all excited. I thought, oh, maybe I'll get to do one book this month because most of you know I have a lot of books in this office I'm trying to dig out of and read. I was able to find three books that were so sounded so incredibly good. I, I just had to get them. So let's talk about the three books. This was the only book that was one of the five selections. There were a couple other ones, um, Kai Ki and True Biz, that were on my radar, but I'm like, you know, I'm not feeling a strong pull to them. So I'm keeping them in mind, and I'll see how the buzz goes as people continue to read or start to read those books. This, however, this is a narrative nonfiction book called Bittersweet by Susan Cain. Now, Susan Cain wrote the book Quiet. And that book, loved it. I think it was a five-star read for me. It absolutely blew my mind. So that was a big pull to why I wanted to read this because I remembered with Quiet, when I first heard about it, I wasn't like, ooh, I want to read this book. Yet when I read how Susan Cain presented the information, it, it was remarkable. And so she definitely became an author that was on my radar. So now she has written Bittersweet. And here she's urging society to cultivate space for the undervalued, indispensable introverts among us. No, sorry, that was in Quiet. Um, now, <laughs> that was the older other book. Now she's employing the same mix that she did with Quiet of research, storytelling, and memoir to explore why we experience sorrow and longing. And I found that so intriguing. And the surprising lessons these states of mind teach us about creativity, compassion, leadership, spirituality, mortality, and love. So bittersweetness is a tendency to states of longing, poignancy, and sorrow, an acute awareness of passing time, a curiously piercing joy when beholding beauty. It recognizes that light and dark, birth and death, bitter and sweet are forever paired. A song in a minor key, an elegant, elgaic, elgaic, I'm totally mispronouncing that, I'm sure, poem, or even a touching television commercial, all can bring us to the sublime, even holy state of mind, and ultimately to greater kinship with our fellow humans. And bittersweetness is not, as we tend to think, just a momentary or feeling, a momentary feeling or event. It's also a way of being a stored heritage, our artistic and spiritual traditions amplified by recent scientific and management research teach us its power. So Kane's going to show us how bittersweet, a state of mind, is the quiet force that helps us transcend our personal and collective pain. If we don't acknowledge our own sorrows and longings, she says, we can end up inflicting them on others via abuse domination and neglect and these are i feel like huge themes in the world today but if we realize that all humans know or will know loss and suffering we can turn toward each other and we can learn to transform our own pain 
into creativity, transcendence, transcendence, and connection. When I read the description for this book, so A, I told you, I was totally pulled in because of who the author was and what she had done with the other books she had written. Amazing. And then I realized, you know, we are surrounded by so much negativity, so much pain and angst um, in our media, in, in our conversations, our, in our interpersonal dialogues that this for me, I have a couple other books I'm going to pair this with. It's the perfect way to finish a literary journey to really experience a way of finding a state um, above to kind of transcend beyond that, but yet to appreciate that this is a part of life, these feelings. And it just, it sounded absolutely perfect. And like, it was one of those books that once you read it, it will change the way you think about the world and you live the way you live. Okay. Then one more nonfiction book. This is a collection of essays. This was one of the add-ons. Bomb Shelter, Love, Time, and Other Explorations. So this is going to be a fast read. It's quirky, it's a mama drama, and it's literary. Um, so a lifelong worrier, the author here, Philipot, Philipot, also kept an eye out for danger, a habit that only intensified when she became a parent. So I had resonated right there because I, I have anxiety. I worry about everything every day all day so I'm like okay this is this is my language so and I have a literary journey I'm putting together that was around these kind of experiences and mental states so I'm like perfect this will round it out um, but she looked on the bright side too believing that as long as she cared enough she could keep her loved ones safe then in the dark of one quiet pre-dawn morning she woke abruptly to a terrible sound and found her teenage son unconscious on the floor. In the aftermath of a crisis that darkened her signature sunny spirit, she wondered, if this happened, what else could happen? And how do any of us keep going where, when we can't know for sure what's coming next? So that, again, just the concept of her state of mind and then facing a, a traumatic event, I don't know yet what it is, um, and just how she's going to pull through that. And again, I feel like it's pulling out an example that we're touching on in uh, Bittersweet. But again, I was just like, I, I need to read this book. Um, so there was my second selection. I actually got a lighter, slightly lighter pick for my first selection. And this was the other add-on that was offered this month. Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. This is a historical fiction. It is a debut author. It's been very buzzy. It's brainy. It's about an underdog. It's a feminist book. It does, though, to warn those of you with triggers, has sexual assault in the book referenced. So um, just be aware of that. So our main character is a chemist, Elizabeth Zott. She's not your average woman. In fact, Elizabeth Zott would be the first to point out that there is no such thing as an average woman. But it's the early 1960s, and I thought, oh, this is going to be fun. Let's, let's just go back. Go back to the 1960s. Woman, see what it was like, right? And all her male team, her all-male team at Hastings Research Institute, take a very unscientific view of equality. Except for one, Calvin Evans, the lonely, brilliant, Nobel Prize-nominated grudge holder who falls in love with, of all things, her mind, true chemistry results but like science life is unpredictable and that is a theme coming out of this book here which is why a few years later elizabeth zoft finds herself not only a single mother but the reluctant star of america's most beloved cooking show supper at six elizabeth's unusual approach to cooking and here's the here's the way she talks Combine one tablespoon acetic, acetic acid with a pinch of sodium chloride. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really enjoy this. Proves revolutionary. But as her following grows, not everyone's happy. Because as it turns out, Elizabeth Zott isn't just teaching women to cook. She's daring them to change the status quo. Laugh out loud funny, shrewdly observant, and studded with a dazzling cast of supporting characters. This is an original and vibrant as the protagonist we're going to meet. And I just 
absolutely adored that when I read about it. And I feel like right before the selections came out, I started seeing a lot of buzz around this book on social media and it caught my attention. And then when I saw it, I, I read the description. I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, this is my book. I didn't show you guys this. You do get a little bookmark every month with Book of the Month Club and it, they always have a fun little quote. So this month's is use me or lose me. So that is it. Those were my three selections. As always, link below if you choose to sign up and thank you or the links to the books are also below. Hit subscribe and join if you're not already. We will be talking about a lot of book content on the channel. And other than that, you, several of you, Book of the Month Club subscribers, let me know what you grabbed this month or if you've read any of these books. I always love to hear people's reactions, especially when they're different than mine. I think it's so intriguing. You know, we all have our own perceptions. It's fun. Let's go read some books. Thank you, as always, for watching and being a part of my literary life. Happy reading.